Hello. Let me see that big old present. That, that is a, who's that from? Isn't that something? Trust in God too. And and do what you think is the right thing. Uh, one thing about it, you've got a lot of good friends. Good luck to you.
It's March 6, 1999, and today is Jolynn's wedding day and Chad's wedding day, and uh, we're a little bit early. The cars are coming already, though. We have Kay Robertson and Vera McConnell. I figured this is two wonderful ladies that might just offer Miss Jolynn and Chad some advice. I told Chad before we left home, I said, Chad, you just always be as good to JoLynn as you want her to be to you. That is very good advice. I would say the same thing, and I would say always keep the Lord first in your life. Thank you. This is this is Jane Abels. Now she's been very very special in JoLynn's life. Uh, she's created a lovely video that will be at the end of this recording. Anything that you'd like to say to the new I'd just like to say that this is a very special day for all of us. Uh, Jolene is like another daughter of mine. She's been so good to me. I don't know what I'm doing without her. Isn't she, that the truth? She does everything for me. She's just wonderful. And uh, the video that we had done for her went through both her life and Chad's life. So I hope it'll be something else treasure forever. Thank you. All right, we have here uh, Chad's grandfather, I understand. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. and, and, and you are? I'm a uh, uh, step-grandfather of the bride. Wonderful. Uh, I understand now that, that Chad has said that, that uh, advice uh, is too late for advice. His father has said uh, he's already told him everything and it, he doesn't know it now, it's too late. Is there anything you'd like to say to Chad or say about Chad? I'm hard here. She wants you to say something about Chad. Oh, well, I think he's a mighty fine grandson myself. He surely, yeah, surely is. Make your old man a good husband. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. Thank you so much. Now, Jack, I, I know this is real hard for you, but uh, this is your sweet baby granddaughter here now. I'm going to yeah, ask you what <laughs> your first one. First little, little girl. Oh, is that really good? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jack. This is Mayo Atkins, and he's yeah. the grandfather of this, this stuff, I understand. What would you like to say? Man is here. How do you feel about this wedding? 93. You're 93 years old? 27th of the month. My yes. goodness. Looking for that 94. You're looking mighty handsome, too. Hmm? You're looking handsome, too. <laughs> okay, you're good. <laughs> hey, Deborah. Hey. How's it going? Going good. We're good. Getting... Going to get there, aren't we? Yeah. You're getting great. Just the one, I know. Just the wedding party coming in. I know. Y'all come you're on in. Great I know. Come on in. Tell me. Are you getting gray headed, too? No. Not yet. I watched that grandma. Right okay. Oh, we got this special occasion here. We're getting the, the boutonniere on, on the uh, father of the bride. Did she get it right, Danny? Danny, would you like to say something to your daughter? This is tough. I put you on the spot. You didn't expect this. I bet you're full of emotion right now. All kind of emotion. All kind of emotion. It don't, it don't seem like it's 22 years ago. It doesn't, does it? Right. And now she's grown. She's grown. Yeah. She's grown. She should be gone. This is Donald and Barbara McAdams, and they are very special people to Jolynn in particular. Is there anything that you'd like to say to Jolynn? Just that uh, I know this is a very special day for Jolynn, and it's a special day for us too, because she's almost like none of our own, and we hope for their best for Jolynn in the future. She's certainly been a blessing to us over the last several years, and, and I know she's going to make Chad a fine wife. Yes, and, and you, Miss Barbara, anything that you'd like to say? I love you, Jolene. I love you, Jolene. That's sweet. All right, big boy. All right, what's up? Uh, this way, girl. Stephanie, what are you thinking about all this? What do you think about all this? It's really pretty, isn't it? Yes. Very good. All right. Okay, with a smile. Ready? Good. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Now. Thank you. Somebody real special in Jolene's life, and, and uh, he's getting his clip on ready. Anything you'd like to say here? Uh, it's not a clip on, but I wish it was. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty pretty good wish right there. Oh, anything you'd like to, to have Jolene know uh, in your thoughts? I just wish him all the luck in the world. She deserves it, doesn't she? She sure does. Yeah, right there. Is that something blue? Uh, Okay, with a smile. Good. Okay, ready? This has to do with something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and this is a lucky sixpence in my shoe. Who are you children? Are you going to be in the wedding? Let's see, you must be a ring bearer, is that right? Are you Hunter? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's your name, honey? With a smile. I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Kay. Oh, how pretty. You going to carry it on that? Oh, do real good now. Now, this is Zachary Parker, and I think that Zachary Parker has something that he'd like to say. Jalen. got to speak up. Jalen, when you was at the wedding today, you was more beautiful than I ever, ever pictured you in my head. And, and you've done so good and everything. And, Kate, look at the we gotta you. go in here. Wish I could do good and work that you've done and everything. I hope I can. And Honor. Hope I can meet a good person like you. I wish you, you everything go. that you need and all the look in the world. I love you. Thanks. What do you want to say? I've been asking the people what they might have to say to this little child. And I would say, don't ever do anything or try to be anything. Unless you believe that that is what you want to do and what you want to be. Uh, I love you too. Here, this is your Miss Judy. Miss Judy? Oh no. Yeah, that's yours. This is yours for helping us. This is an important part of the thing, Judy. Hi, Jesse. That, there's Miss Judy. She now she's faithless. Yeah, you know how to push the red button back. <laughs> Now this is this is the grandmother of the bride, and Jack Khan, who has become a part of the family too. And I'm just going to ask you just what thoughts you might want to pass on. Jolene, we love you very, very much, and remember what I told you in that note. And you know I'll always be here for you, regardless. I love you. Thank you. You're a great granddaughter. You're a man, wonderful boy. Make a beautiful couple. Be happy. Yes. Thank you. Now this is Chad's sister and I don't even know your name. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Kimberly Merritt. Oh Kimberly, you are just lovely as a picture. Thank is you. there anything you'd like to say to your brother that you're losing? <laughs> yes, thank goodness. No, just kidding, Chad. You be sweet to Joanne. Uh, never go to bed mad. Um, don't fight over things that don't matter. That's the most important thing. And just be sweet to me. Ah, that's good. That's good advice. That's Martha Shackelford. She's JoLynn's aunt, and, and I just wondered uh, if there's something you'd like to share with JoLynn. JoLynn, I'm so very happy for you and Chad, and I want you to always remember that there's two sides to everything, and look both ways. Thank I you. I love you. Oh, thank you. Honey. Now this is uh, Mama Jones. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. You are pretty as a picture, Mama Jones. Is there anything you'd like to say to JoLynn and to Chad both? I just wish you a lot of happiness and everything.
here this afternoon for the purpose of uniting this couple in holy matrimony. As we come to this time of service, let's bow our heads together as we pray. Father, I pray that you be with us, bless us as we go through this service. I pray, Lord, that it would be meaningful to Chad and to Jolene, all those that are around us. And Lord, that we might go away from this place with a renewed appreciation for marriage and what you do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
glorify God through the home. And it's very important as you begin your home that it be a place where God has first place in your lives and in your home. Now, in the book of Ephesians, the <clears throat> Joel and God said to the wives, Wives and yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything. In every organism, there can only be one head. God has ordained that the man is to be the head. And even though it's not popular in our world today to submit yourself to someone, if your marriage is going to be a success, you must submit yourself to Chad's headship as your husband and as your leader. However, Chad, I would remind you that he said in verse 25 and following, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. <coughs> God is saying to you in that chapter that the kind of submission that Jolene gives to you is a kind of submission that comes as you love her with your whole heart. <coughs> As you give her yourself to her completely and fully, she will love you, she will cherish you, and she will submit herself to you. To you. It's not that you're bigger than her or stronger than her, but it's because of the love that you share with her, the love that you give her. I would remind <coughs> both of you that when God took the rib out of Adam's side, Jolie didn't take it from the head of man. For if it had done that, it might have been that you would be ahead of, of Chad and it's going to keep him under your foot. But Chad, neither did he take it from the foot of man. For had he done that, it would have meant that the woman was to be under the foot of the man and he was to trample her and treat her in a way that was not according to her dignity. It was out of his side, under his arm for the protection that he could give to her close to his heart for the love that they could share and by his side so that they could walk through life together. Now in just a few moments, you're going to be committing yourself to each other. I want to remind you that you not only are saying these vows in front of me and this congregation that is gathered here, we're also saying these to God. You're making a solemn pledge. This is not something that is just good until you get tired of each other, until you have a spouse, spat, until you have other problems in your life. You're committing yourself to God that you'll live together until death shall part you. Now, I wish I could tell you that you'll go through the next 50 or 75 years without ever having a disagreement. But there are going to be disagreements. And there'll be times when you don't agree with each other. But there's enough passage in the book of Ephesians that says don't let the sun go down on your way. When you do have those disagreements, make sure that one of you is willing to make up before you go to bed. Don't let that hurt or that disagreement fester in your lives. Make sure that you get things together before you go to bed. Now, you, Chad, and you, Jolie, and having come to me signifying your desire to be formally united in marriage and being assured that no legal, moral, or religious barriers hinder this proper union, I'm going to ask you if you'll join your right hands and repeat after me. <coughs> I, Chad, take you, Jolie. I, Chad, take you, Jolie. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and hope. To have and to hope. From this day forward. From this day forward. 
For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer for poorer. For richer for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. To death us do part. And thereunto I pledge you my faith. And thereunto I pledge you my faith. I join in. I join in. Take you, Chad. I join in. Take you, Chad. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. And thereunto. I pledge you my faith. I have reign of peace. <clears throat> Rings have played a, a, an important part in the history of man. The beginning of time up to this time, early in our history when kings ruled the earth, they would take their signet ring and press it into wax, still important documents, and send them from one place to another. Over the years, friends have exchanged rings as a symbol of their friendship. But the most beautiful symbol of the ring is in the marriage relationship. If you'll notice this ring, it is made out of gold. Gold is a symbol of the purity of the marriage relationship that you're entering into and of the vows that you have just exchanged with each other. Also, the, the circle of this ring does not have an end. It is a continuous circle. And you have just pledged to each other that you will be faithful to each other as long as you both shall live. And every time you look at the ring, be reminded of this pledge that you have made to each other. Chad, would you place this ring on the third finger? I'll join in and repeat that to me. Join in. Join in. I give this ring to you. I give this ring to you. As a symbol of my love for you. As a symbol of my love for you. With the gift of this ring. With the giving of this ring. I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you. As your husband. As your husband. For the remainder of our, our lives. For the remainder of our lives. Chad, I accept this ring. <laughs> as a symbol of your love for me. As a symbol of your love for me. I covenant to bear it. As a sign of our relationship as husband and wife. As a sign of our relationship with husband and wife. As I wear this ring, it, it will communicate to all who see it that I will be faithful to you alone. Now, now Julian, would you take the ring and place it on the third finger of Chad's left hand? Chad, I give this ring to you. As a symbol of my love for you. As a symbol of my love for you. With the giving of this ring. With the giving of this ring. I commit myself to you. As your wife. For the remainder of our lives. For the remainder of our lives. Jolene, I accept this ring. Jolene, I accept this ring. As a symbol of your love for me. As a symbol of your love for me. I covenant to wear it. I covenant to wear it. As a sign of our relationship. As a sign of our relationship. As husband and wife. As husband and wife. As I wear this ring. As I wear this ring. It will communicate to all who see it. It will communicate to all who see it. That I will be faithful to you alone. That I will, I will be faithful to you alone. Let's bow our heads together as we go to the Lord in prayer again. <laughs> Father, we rejoice, Chad and Joanne, and the joining of their lives together. We thank you for this moment in their life where they are coming one in their place to each other in your eyes. And Father, I just pray all your richest blessings on them as they travel down the life's pathway together. I pray, Father, that you would bless them day by day, week by week, and year by year. I pray, Father, that as they grow old together, their love might grow more tender day by day might grow stronger each day that they live together. And Father, I pray that many years from now, when they look back upon this day, that they can say at that time that they love each other more then than they did at this point in time. 
Father, bless everything in their life from this moment onward. For we ask this in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Now by the ordination of God, I pronounce you husband and wife. What God has gathered, has joined together, let no man put us under chat. You may kiss your wife. Dream came true. 
uh, they'll meet you over in the fellowship hall to my left. Thank you so much for being here on behalf of both families. Thank you so much. He's somewhere out there. I don't know. He's probably a place far away as he is. Hey, you. I'd like to meet me. Yeah, I'm going Okay, <laughs> put you on the spot and lift you on. Okay, one more like this and turn it back towards you. And get it up a little closer to your face. There you go, like that. Look, looking at the bouquet. Okay, looking at the bouquet. <laughs> I don't want you rolling that. Okay, stay there. Okay. Well, you get kind of like you were start recording here I, this is something that I really wanted oh, I to capture to yes well, oh, okay. uh, this is Teresa and, and I wanted you to just tell me what advice you might have my advice to you Jolene would be not to go to sleep in flannel pajamas on your anniversary that's precious <laughs> thank you Christy Euler and she is the maid of honor at this occasion and I think a very good friend 
of Jolene's and Chad's as, as well, is that right? Mm -hmm. And newly married? Yes, I am. Is there anything you'd like to say to them? Just wish you the best good luck. Jolene, you need a miracle advice you can count. <laughs> okay. Oh, I made a mistake, Jacqueline. I am so sorry. I was thinking Christy Euler was the maid of honor, but you are the maid of honor, right? That is right. And I, I am so sorry. <laughs> and, and to correct the record, I'm saying that. And I have pictures of you at the wedding. When you were crying, what were you thinking? I was thinking, oh, Jolene, I can't believe. <laughs> Never gonna be able to sleep on the same day with you. That's right. Just been like with you. It's just been me and you. That's right. And anything that you'd like to say that, that oh, just what comes to mind? Anything? Um. Well, I come to mind the same. And are you going to do the same thing soon? Oh, I don't know when, but I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> oh, good. I hope to be there. And you will be there. Thank you, darling. Oh, now I'm recording. I see you're eating now that everybody's gone through. That's all right. I I'm getting ready to go through myself. I'd like you to do that again, but I don't think I can ask you to. <laughs> groomsmen here I think gathered together uh, I think we have the, the best man in particular so I'm going to ask him how was their evening spent last night how was your evening spent last night oh you were <laughs> you had a long rehearsal did you any advice you'd offer to Chad Chad do you need some advice too late for advice Thank you, thank you, fellas. Thank you, fellas. Now, this is Larry Robertson, and um, I've told that uh, he is best man, and he is also uh, Chad's father. And uh, I, I'm going to ask what you, I asked your wife as well. Uh, any advice that you might have for your son? I, I didn't give him all I know, so if he don't heed him out now, it's too late for advice. <laughs> thank you.